We've looked at transforming the basic sine and cosine wave. This time we're going to look at an example, actually two examples. One where we transform sine in terms of amplitude and phase shift, and the other one taking a cosine function and transforming its period in vertical shift. This screen looks a little bit cramped, but this is a copy of a file I've emailed you and made available on MyMC that summarizes all the different effects that A, B, C, and D have on our sine and cosine functions. I recommend you have the sheet with you as we're going through these examples. Let's first take this example. f of x equals negative 4 times sine of x minus pi over 12. And what a question might ask is, what's the amplitude of this function? What's the period of this function? phase shift, range, and then lastly, please sketch the graph. Keep in mind when I ask you to sketch a graph on an exam, I'm not expecting it to be perfect, but I need to see that you understand what amplitude, period, phase shift, and range mean for when you're graphing a function. Let's take the first bit. Let's look at the amplitude. Well, I said the amplitude was equal to the absolute value of that constant a. In this case, a is equal to negative 4, so the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. Remember, the amplitude is always positive. It's a distance. It's always positive. All right, so we've gotten the amplitude. Now what about the period of the function? Remember, to find the period, I recommended that you set the absolute value of bx equal to 2 pi. Remember, 2 pi is our typical period and we want to see how this value of b affects our typical period. Well, it turns out in this case, since b is equal to 1, that really the period of our function is 2 pi. It is the same as a basic sine function. So our period is 2 pi. The phase shift, however, looks like it will be non-zero because I have a value for c. Again, I'll take my bx plus c, set it equal to 0, since my normal phase shift is 0 for a basic sine wave, and I'll solve for x. So I'll have x minus pi over 12 is equal to 0, I'll add pi over 12 to both sides, and I'll get the phase shift equaling pi divided by 12. That means I will shift my graph to the right by pi over 12 radians. Alright, amplitude period phase shift, the next bit we have to look at is the range of this function. We haven't talked too much about how a, b, c, and d affect the range. Well, first of all, we remember that a normal sine function has a range of negative 1 to positive 1. So knowing that, we'll first look at our value for d. Is there a vertical shift? Because a vertical shift would change that range. Well, if our d is greater than 0, it shifts our graph up. If it's less than zero, it shifts our graph down. However, in this case, there is no vertical shift because there is no d. d is equal to zero. However, we do have an amplitude that's not just equal to one. So our sine function, instead of going from negative one to positive one, because we're multiplying our sine by the number four, it's now going to have a range of negative four to positive four. So that's the range of this function. So the last thing we need to do is sketch this graph. Let's start off with our basic sine function and go from there. Remember sine's the one that starts at 0, goes up to 1 at pi over 2, back to 0 at pi, negative 1 at 3 pi over 2, and 0 at 2 pi. If we have an amplitude of 4, that means instead of going from negative 1 to positive 1, the range is going to be from negative 4 to positive 4. But if we stop there, we'd be making a mistake because we have to go back to our original function. Our original function has a negative 4 multiplying our sine function. Remember, if we have a negative number, if we have a negative a, then we have to reflect this sine graph over the x-axis. So really graphing negative 4 sine x would look like this. All right, so we've taken care of our amplitude. We've taken care of the negation sign. The period, well the period is still 2 pi, so we don't have to worry about that. It's just like a standard sine function. The range we've taken care of. Now lastly we have a phase shift. We need to pick up this function and move it to the right, 
pi over 12. And once we do that, then we have completely graphed our function, negative 4 sine of x minus pi over 12. Now on an exam, I'll expect you to be able to do this by hand without relying on your calculator. For instance, your calculator won't tell you what the period, the phase shift, and the amplitude are. You might be able to read it from the screen, but pi over 12, I bet you're not going to be able to read very well. But what I would like you to do is to test this using your calculator. See if you're on the right track. So to do that, again, we'd go to our calculator and press the y equals button, and we would type in negative 4 sine of x minus pi divided by 12 and and parentheses and graph. And after this graphs it, we can remember we can change our zoom and do our z trig. And then we can see if we're on the right track. Well, does this look like what we graphed before? Let's check it out. And I'd say yes, that looks like it goes up from negative 4 to positive 4, it looks like it's shifted to the right, and it looks like we took care of that negative sign correctly. Again, I couldn't read that the phase shift was pi over 12 on my calculator, but I can go back and make sure I've done my graphing correctly by checking it roughly with my calculator. Alright, let's look at this function. Cosine of 2x plus 1. But wait a minute, we've only been talking about sine. I've never actually given you an example with cosine. Well, turns out it's not much different. The amplitude, the period, the phase shift, and the range will be just like it was with the sine function. We'll just need to remember what our basic cosine looks like as opposed to our basic sine. But if we start off again with amplitude, we remember that the amplitude is the absolute value of a. Well, it looks like in this case a is just equal to 1, so our amplitude is 1. Since we have a value for b that's not equal to 1, something's going to change with our period. To find the period, again, we set the absolute value of bx equal to 2 pi. Remember, 2 pi is our normal period, and we solve for x. And when I do that, I get 2x equals 2 pi, and dividing both sides by 2, I end up with my period being equal to pi. Alright, next my phase shift. I don't think I'm going to have a phase shift, because I seem to remember that the phase shift had to do with that value c. And in this case, it looks like c is equal to 0. But we can still go through and make sure. We'll set bx plus c equal to 0, and we'll solve for x. So 2x equals 0, dividing both sides by 2, we find our phase shift is in fact equal to 0. Well, what about the range? Well, in this case, we have a non-zero value for d. The normal cosine function has a range of negative 1 to positive 1, just like our sine. But, because we have a value for d, we need to remember that if d is positive, it's going to shift up by the value of d, and if d is negative, it will shift the graph down by the value of d. Well, in this case, d is equal to 1, so we will be shifting this whole graph up vertically, by 1. So here's our basic cosine function. Again, it went from negative 1 to positive 1, and we'll pick this whole thing up and shift it up a unit 1, and if we add 1 to our negative 1 and positive 1, those were our old ranges, then I'll get a new range of 0, 2. So now my values for cosine can be anywhere between 0 and 2. The last thing we have to worry about in terms of range is our amplitude, but in this case our amplitude is simply equal to 1, so that means our range just is from 0 to 2. Lastly, we need to again sketch the graph. Let's look at our basic cosine wave. Remember, cosine, unlike sine, starts at its maximum value. That is, it starts at positive 1, goes down to 0 at pi over 2, and down to negative 1 at pi, back to 0 at 3 pi over 2, and up to positive 1 again at 2 pi. And we want to graph the function cosine of 2x plus 1. Again, the amplitude was 1, so we're not going to change the distance between our minimum and our maximum value. However, we do have this d, this vertical shift, that brings our whole function up one unit. 
So this is cosine of x plus 1. Well now we have to take care of that 2x. We need to change the period. Remember that if the period is pi, that means instead of taking from 0 to 2 pi to complete a cycle, it only takes from 0 to pi to complete a cycle. So this is the graph of cosine of 2x plus 1. And now we've completed talking about transforming the basic sine and cosine wave. I've given you two different examples with changing two different aspects of our sine and cosine wave. And hopefully again with homework practice you'll feel more comfortable with this.